So okay, if we have the right environment, now what? The next rule is that we have to stay true to the time box. Now in the sort of standard sprint uh, is 30 days, and the standard uh, stand-up time for, for the daily stand-up meetings is every 24 hours. Uh, now that's just a standard, some teams vary that. But like all principles of agility, you need to be disciplined about whatever time frames you do set. Because if you're not consistent, most of your Agile implementation will fall apart because the lines start to get blurred and they lose their meaning. So good Agile teams treat their deadlines um, like a real launch date, right? They treat their, their sprint end like a real launch date. Because in, in theory, it actually could be because your, your code quality is so high, your application's always shippable, you could launch at any time in theory. So why is the time box so important? There's three reasons. The first is that you have to sort of keep expectations met, both internally and externally. You have internal stakeholders whose morale is contingent on doing what they say they're going to do. And it's the same externally, right? Because external stakeholders want to feel like progress is being made. Also, the time box is an opportunity to batch your decisions. And this is what we were talking about earlier. When things change too quickly, morale is decreased and so is velocity. So you batch your changes and they happen in between each sprint. And finally, you have a core measure of progress. So people sort of understand where they're going and there's a fixed and repetitive cycle to actually making that progress. So in, a, in an agile team, which is a fast team, we must, we must keep communication sort of rapid and relevant, right? So in Waterfall, you know, that development cycle is sort of full of documents, artifacts, those sorts of things. And, you know, that becomes a problem because most of that becomes, you know, trash. You throw that, in, that documentation away as you're developing because it, it becomes uh, rapidly irrelevant, right? Now, in Agile, we cut away most of the excess and keep a very small set of artifacts that drive our progress. How do you do that? Well, the way to do that is to have a single source of truth that allows people to get in, get what they need, and get out. But that only works when you keep things up to date. So first of all, the information has to be timely. It has to be um, accurate. So by timely, I mean that when some status changes of a task, a developer has to update that status on your storyboard system or if you're using some electronic tool, you have to update that status quickly so everybody knows what's going on. And it has to be accurate because if the information is inaccurate, then you really have negative value to your system, which is a problem. And it has to be intuitive so that people can get in quickly, navigate quickly to what they need, and get out without any headaches. So the next piece of this um, is about teamwork, because truly you can't go fast without serious teamwork. And in the waterfall environment, you sort of have a separate and competitive team environment where people are focused on their tasks and only their tasks. Um, and in Agile, you're sort of moving at breakneck speeds, right? So you need full teamwork and cooperation in order to be successful. Um, besides, Separation sort of creates blaming and a lack of forward progress anyway, uh, which doesn't help anybody. And, and probably the most important piece is that the client or that the end user, they don't care about the excuses and they don't care about the finger pointing. They blame the team for not getting there. So the team in the end owns the progress. Um, and finally, it's not just about sort of progress, it's about you know, driving a sense of learning and morale on the team. Right? When you have collective code ownership, people are rolling up their sleeves and helping other people out when they face a problem. And that allows everybody to learn and people to be happier and more productive. So if we understand the golden rules, um, then the next thing we have to understand now is sort of the core meetings other than the sprint planner itself that are involved in a good sort of agile iteration. The first meeting is the daily stand-up. And any good team has to have good communication. That's where the stand-up comes in. It's the heartbeat of communication in Agile because it keeps communication fast and frictionless. So what do we do during a stand-up? Well, as a team, you generally, the first rule is that you stand up. It's not a sit-down meeting because it's not supposed to take long. It encourages sort of preparation and speed that way. So everybody's prepared and you go through your piece quickly. Everybody on the team answers three core questions during a stand-up. The first is, what have I done between the last stand-up and this one? The second is, what do I plan to do 
between this stand-up and the next one? And the final question is, what if any, what if any impediments am I facing that are preventing my progress? So why do we do this? We do this because if you're moving quickly as a developer, and you're sort of in your own world, and you're going very fast, you have no sense of danger. <laughs> you have no sense of what's ahead of you, so you can cause serious problems in the code base if, if, if you're not actually uh, highly communicative with your team. So there's really three core purposes here. You're trying to identify risks. So by understanding what people on your team are up to, you're identifying issues that they could be facing in the future, and you could help them sort through that. You also identify opportunities for collaboration, because you may be working on something that's similar to something uh, another person on your team is going to work on. Um, and also you're identifying opportunities for collision because you may be working on something that someone else is working on and you may not know that. So the idea here in the daily stand-up in terms of being disciplined is you're trying to stop interruptions, right? Because you know, if, if, this, if, if you don't have discipline in this meeting and it happens at a different time every day, no one knows when to expect it. So it's almost necessarily going to interrupt their workday. But if it's at the same time every day, they know when to expect it and they can plan around it. Um, and so that's the idea here in terms of keeping productive communication.